Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining me today. Um, our topic for today is love in this season part two. So get your Bibles, get your pens, get your papers, grab your great big old bottle of water and let's get into the word of God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you right now. God, praying and asking that you would bless your people everywhere. God, give us an ear to hear and a heart to receive your word this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So with this lesson, I will discuss our current political climate and the unity and love we have seen in this season. Because although there are some who would like to take God out of this season or separate God from this season, I have seen him working through his people. Our scripture text is coming from John chapter 3 verses 16 through 18 and it reads, This is how we know what love is. Jesus laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need and does not have pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Amen. So people should be able to see that we have Christ-like characteristics in our life through our actions, through our words, through our attitude. We are all going to go through things as we travel down life's highways. But regardless of what we go through, those God-like attributes should still shine through. We're going to meet people alone this way who don't agree with the way other people live their lives, who would deny people love and other basic rights of life simply because of the color of their skin. But how dare any of us feel like someone else isn't worthy of love or feel like they shouldn't have God's grace shown to them? Who are we to decide Someone isn't worthy of being shown compassion. It was because of God's grace that we were not consumed in our sin. It was because of God's grace that we were not cut down in the precise moment we chose to disobey God. That we chose to cause harm or do wrong to someone else. How dare we? deem any of God's people unlovable or unredeemable. The Bible said that God's compassions fail not and we too ought to have compassion on others. Life has a way of presenting people with challenges that cause them to finally stand up and say enough is enough. Something has to be done. Change has to come. And I have made up in my mind that I will be a part of that change. So let me share this with you. When I saw our Caucasian, Hispanic, and Asian, and other brothers and sisters marching, young folks, old folks, military, honorable police officers, and government officials marching with the Black Lives Matter movement, to me, that was love in action. Matthew 5, 13 through 16 says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a light stand. 
and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16 says, let your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. Somebody's life should be preserved by the salt of Christ in your life. Somebody should be guided to the pathway that leads to Christ by the light that is shown in your life. How can we glorify God when we don't stand for truth? When we see ungodly acts of injustice happening and we say nothing and we do nothing, our light is not shining. In this moment and in this season, when so many rose up to call out the inequities that were so blatant and deliberate against people of color, we did show what love and unity could accomplish. We did show what could be accomplished when you loved in your actions and not just in your words. 1 John 4, 16 through 18. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out or casts out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment, the Bible says. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. I saw people of all races, colors, and creeds being beaten with batons and pepper sprayed and hit with real bullets and shot with rubber bullets and being thrown into the back of unmarked vans being taken to only God knows where. All to stand with people of color. To stand in solidarity with people they did not know. Those folks were battered and bruised just like our black brothers and sisters. And to them, I say thank you. That is what binding together in love is all about. They came out to stand and march with us day after day and night after night, knowing what the punishment could be. But I believe in this season, the perfect love of Jesus Christ casts out fear. I know when we look at the unrest in our country, with the racial challenges and COVID-19 and economic disparities, broken homes, broken hearts, broken bodies, domestic violence. Our babies are being shot and killed at school where they should be safe. It's enough to cause you to fear. So we pray and we cry and we march and we pray and we cry and we march and we pray and we cry and we march over and over again. But it's in this season, it's in this season that the love of God was put into action. I want us to know that the love that Jesus gives is that perfect love. It is that love that makes you say, I don't know how God is going to fix this. It is that love that believes and knows beyond a doubt that God can fix any situation. It is that love that knows that even if he doesn't, he will give us the grace to live with whatever that thorn is that we are living with. And we know that God loves us with an everlasting love. 
and gives us new mercies every day. Paul had prayed three times, asking God to remove the storm from his flesh. And God replied to him, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. God's love is uncompromising and steadfast. To quote Jill Biden, love holds a family together. Love makes us flexible and resilient. Love allows us to become more than ourselves together. And though it cannot protect us from the sorrows of life, it gives us a refuge. It gives us a home. Then she asked the question, how do you make a broken family whole? The answer, the same way you make a nation whole. With love, with understanding, with small acts of kindness, with bravery, with unwavering faith, you show love for each other in big ways and small ones again and again. She went on to say our differences are not irreconcilable. Our differences are precious and our similarities are infinite. In my closing, 1 Corinthians 13 verses four through eight, Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects always trust, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Thank you for joining me today. I love you. Let's continue to love one another to life. Until next week, God bless you.